Welcome and good afternoon. This is Theatra with Freedom Reigns on Free Thinking Radio. Um, we're going to do something a little different than what uh, most of our Freedom Reigns listeners have uh, experienced before. But on Thursdays, we are going to start having guest co-hosts. And today, we are going to have Bill Wood with us. And I'm really excited to have Bill because um, he's he's got the military background, the knowledge. He's a seasonable, uh, seasoned vet in the fight for freedom. And uh, I want to go ahead and uh, welcome Bill. Bill, welcome. Your mic is open. Thank you. I appreciate uh, the invitation very much. And I, too, am looking forward to uh, co-hosting today's show. Yes, yes, I understand that you have a lot of questions for our guest today, who is Drake, Um, as I'm really looking forward to your questions, because I know I I spend all day long (laughs) answering questions and forwarding questions and comments and stuff to Drake and uh, resending them out and... So this is kind of a really good place for us to do this. And you and I have spoken in the past, and uh, I was very impressed with your knowledge and skill and what all you have done. And so I want to go ahead, and um, at this time we'll bring Drake in too. I'm going to open Drake's mic up. Uh, Drake, Hello. you there? Hi. CSIB. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead, and I'm just going to let uh, Bill run with this. Come on with so, it, Bill. Bill. You got the you got the floor, honey. Okay. Well, uh, I do want to thank uh, Freedom Reigns and Blog Talk Radio and uh, Wolf Spirit Radio uh, for producing this show and giving me the opportunity to sit down with Drake and. Uh, go over some what I have gotten is new information, uh, but uh, I think uh, Drake would agree with me that things are really heating up in the past couple of days. Uh, so uh, the first thing that I kind of wanted to touch base on is uh, the Neil Keenan uh, lawsuit. Uh, I did note that uh, Drake uh, was a call-in guest uh, last night uh, on the uh, – uh, Project Camelot show with Carrie Cassidy, and uh, <laughs> caught it as soon as he jumped on the line and uh, was uh, impressed to hear from him. Uh, but I did want to give Drake the opportunity to talk about uh, uh, what uh, Keith Scott had to say last night and uh, allow him the opportunity to clarify the points that uh, I think he was trying to get out. So do you want to take that one? Well, that's uh, an awful pregnant question. Um, <laughs> yes, basically, it is. If you, the easiest way for me to do this is for people that really want to know what's going on is to listen to that uh, recording. It basically explains the um, primary situation of the finances of the globe. This also includes individual countries, and that's slightly different in different aspects. The uh premise of what is being done is basically to remove the financial basis for the bad guys, cabal, whatever you want to call it, uh, in order to um, take the financial power in such a manner that um, they have nothing left. Now, a lot of people are concerned in a lot of ways as to what happens when uh, the banks close. And one of the things I've uh, suggested a lot of people do is to get a hold of uh, silver coin, that sort of thing. Uh, If you can afford it, a little gold wouldn't hurt you just to hold on to. Um, Lay up a little groceries, this sort of thing. You're looking at a period of anywhere from uh, two, three days to a couple weeks maybe. Um, In the meantime, the premise is this. The plan that I've been privileged to uh, uh, be invited to look at uh, takes into account this closing. Now, one of the things people don't understand is that you have to zero a currency out before you can truly revalue it. 
you can have a partial revaluation uh, without uh, zeroing a currency out. But that still leaves value. And the problem is, is that um, the size of what we're de what is being dealt with is so enormous that were the dollar to go to 10 cents, uh, they'd provide a truckload to make up the difference to somebody they wanted to hire to do something. This power needs to be totally removed, and that's why you zero it out and let it stay that way for a couple of days. Um, in the process, the um, bulk of the uh, remainder of the plan then comes into effect almost immediately. Part of that is that your lights are not going to be turned off, phone should still work, toilet plus, usual things. Um, the idea is a transition. It's not a uh, takeover, and it's not uh, a military coup. Um, it's not what people think because of the agreement to the plan by those operating it, which is to return to our original documentation and to return to sovereignty. This includes individuals as well as groups. So in terms of the lawsuit itself, it's not been uh, finalized yet. And um, as I understand it, things are in process to do so. So within the next few days, give or take, uh, possibly uh, you'll see some action. I don't know the itinerary. And if I did, I would not be uh, putting it out on the air for sure. Um, people are just going to have to wait uh, a little bit. And believe me, it's hard. When you know what's happening, it's, it's even more difficult when you don't. Drake, if but, you don't uh, mind, um, Drake, I checked, yes? on the, uh, I checked on the PACER website, and it states that the uh, defendants have until May 11th to respond. I understand that, but that's not the entirety of the thing. There's right. uh, several actions that uh, are to be taken, uh, whether they've responded or not. Um, the, there's a there's a, there's a um, consummate difference between what everybody's used to in terms of legality and law, uh, between what's being done and the uh, premise for it or basis of it, and. Um, this is why I suggest everybody who has not listen to what uh, Keith had to say on that uh, interview. The um, basis, one of the bases that they're uh, attempting to accomplish, uh, that will be accomplished actually because it can't be refused, um, is to free everyone from the financial control, suppression, etc that everybody in Europe, uh, United States, and most of the world has been living under. The manner in which you do that is to take the feet, the take the legs out from under the finances. When you can't pay the goons, they don't show up. It's just that simple. I hope that answers okay. that question. Yes, very well. Um, so that leads into the next area that I wanted to touch on because there seemed to be quite a bit of confusion over this. Um, I don't think people are... 100% uh, taking into account that this lawsuit isn't just being fought in the U.S. courts. Um, so if you could take uh, a couple of minutes and explain how uh, maritime law or admiralty law uh, is being used in this situation as well as U.S. law. Um, okay. Okay. Um... Shoot. Uh, maritime Admiralty Law has been sort of merged over the um, past history, and so most people look at it strictly in Admiralty terms. And under Admiralty terms, there is what's called a Maritime uh, Bill, and everybody is familiar with a Bill of Lading. This is similar to that, only it is in this case a financial instrument and instruments uh, and the um, legal rights to uh, what those instruments deal with. Um, those are the collateral accounts, as they're called, and those are the, quote, official portions of the finance for revaluation. What uh, 
is transpiring is that the uh, Federal Reserve and other banking institutions, uh, European Central Banking, uh, United States Central Banking, Bank of International Settlements, etc., have been um, absconding with uh, portions of these accounts. By that I mean they can either outright steal it, uh, in some cases they will leverage it, in some cases lease it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to attach to it and uh, falsely derive value from it. This has been the basis for the central banking system uh, since this started back in the 1700s. The uh, difference is, is that the legal rights to these accounts have been consolidated and the consolidation of that bears to the lawsuit. Now, here in the United States, everybody's probably familiar with the liens that have been placed on the 12 central banks for federal banks. In Europe, the, there are about another half dozen that have been liened recently, along with the Bank of International Settlements. None of these institutions had at any time base rights to use any of the collateral funds. However, they did so anyway. The position is that they now get to repay what they have been playing games with forever. So basically, you're going to ask uh, banks who don't have the currency to come up with what's called lawful currency, which is gold. And according to the original agreements of anything that was uh, allowed to be used, the payments at, I believe it's 4% per annum, and right. this is some um, uh, tons in the trillions of gold. And uh, the whole of the banking systems that I know of are not close to having that sort of uh, bullion on hand. Therefore, they can't pay. They're put into fault and subsequently bankrupt. So the uh, central banking system is due to be closed very soon. Does that answer that? So, yes. And so in that bankruptcy, when they can't uh, provide the real value currency, uh, by bankrupting the banks, it basically gives legal rights to go in, take over, and run the system um, by basically, not by the Neil Keenan lawsuit, but because of it. So. Uh, basically, it's returning all of the rights to the money that was originally put into the accounts by the original account holders. Is that basically correct in what I'm saying? Uh, yes, and there's also what you have to remember. There are uh, several rather lengthy agreements as to the use of the funds, um, designations for uh, um, putting uh, everybody back to work, uh, taking care of infrastructure that we've not uh, bothered to slap a coat of paint on even, uh, you name it. Um, and what it basically will mean is an extraordinary, um, I don't know what you'd call it, a jump start of everything you can think of economically. Now, the other part of what's going on in terms of doing this, um, there are uh, emergency food stores that have been laid up in case people uh, don't get a delivery at the grocery uh, and, they're, and they're in dire need. Um, along with that, as I said, the infrastructure type things such as, you know, water service and that sort of thing, electrical, uh, is supposed to be preserved. And this is, uh, as I said, a basic part of the plan so that people don't have to go uh, all crazy and, and full of anxiety screaming in the streets uh, about something that um, uh, isn't even going to happen. Uh, this is what they want to avoid. They do not want to have chaos in the people that are involved in this. They do not want to cause extraordinary uh, grief in terms of... Um, what they uh, people would think they would see. So what you're going to have is a zero account, basically, in terms of value. Um, everybody, I think, has heard of the Weimar Republic and their extraordinary inflation. Well, um, basically, you're going well past that. The 
difference is is that the uh, these collateral accounts are sufficient to refund the basis of an honest and open banking system where that's what it is. In other words, it doesn't uh, suppress you. It does not cause you problems in terms of getting the money you need to plant crops or build a building or operate a business or work. And this is the a lot of people have have trouble understanding that that sort of thing is even possible. So therein uh, therein lies a lot of the misunderstanding. There is a difference, and it's coming. Uh, it's going to be complex. It's not real simple, but it's not something that the average person um, need be real concerned about. So in other words, you're on limited income. You run out of food. There's ways to uh, supply you. You will not uh, go hungry. You will not do without. This is the idea of the plan, a smooth, uh, peaceful transition. And that's a big difference between takeovers, military coups, martial laws, and, uh, well, as such, revolutionary wars or any of the nasty things you can think of. So that's the basic difference. Next question. Okay. Um, basically... I yesterday I got some new information that uh, laid out uh, some details of this plan that I agree is very very complicated um, that are going to a impress people <laughs> and b give everybody a lot of reassurance that this has been contemplated and thought about and arranged for quite some time. And uh, I don't know if you have gotten the same dissemination of uh, information that I have, uh, but we are all aware of a late uh, an executive order that uh, President Obama put out called National Defense Resources Prepar uh, Preparedness. Uh, yeah. That seems that there has been some thought to keeping the utilities keeping water, as, aware, as well as FEMA preparations for uh, MREs in the tens of millions to be stored and prepared and on hand, as well as military orders being put out to, A, uh, aid in the transition, make sure nobody gets left behind, and B, ensure that uh, Re where resources are needed that they're delivered. Um, can you? That's my understanding. Could you uh, give some clarity on what your understanding is? Uh, you just named it. Um, that was the. That's pretty much the plan verbatim. Uh, one part that everybody's leaving out is the uh, citizens' organizations, the militias, armed groups, uh, freedom groups, things of this nature. Um, one of the tasks I've been given is that. When this is happening, I'm supposed to notify several people, and the notification is supposed to be some 24 hours ahead of the uh, last uh, or second final shoe falling or however you want to look at that. And basically what this means is that you'll have a heads up about 24 hours, give or take, uh, before uh, extraordinary events. Now. The other part of this deals goes to a combination of mass arrests of the what have perpetrated these things on um, other people. Um, some of the things that have been done, uh, if anybody really takes a look at it, aren't too humane. Um, I've seen people living in uh, squalor that was worse than what most dogs endure when they're not taken care of. And, um, as a matter of fact, we drop off food for uh, a couple of people uh, in our near our location here that uh, need it. Um, so, w what you're looking at is that the the plan was designed to do several things: one, to make sure the population didn't suffer in the process, and secondly, make sure that uh, there are agreements within the plan at certain points of action that uh, gives the uh, civilian authority uh, to a civilian for what the overall plan is. This means that you're going to have a temporary, and I do mean temporary, and I'm going to capitalize that, brand it on your forehead if you believe it, temporary office holders. Now, the 
deal with that is that it takes a commander in chief level in order to deal with executive orders that are bogus, treaties that are unconstitutional, etc. There's a lot of this stuff that needs to be taken care of. I don't know if you've gotten a hold of the uh, same outing that uh, I read a couple of days ago, but it stipulates a 120-day wait period to reelect people to see whether or not that the local government uh, has been uh, corrected. Um, that goes to localization. People that are below the governor level may not be exactly who they say they are and that sort of thing or have done things that are uh, contrary to holding their office. These people need to be removed directly by the people. You need to do this in a reasonable manner. Uh, you work with your sheriff and you get rid of the person, uh, be that, uh, you know, taking them into custody or whatever. But the, the premise of it is, is that yes, everything will, everything is going to be looked to that can, that, um, any normal person can think of. And the idea behind that, as I said again, say again, is that, um, you don't need to be uh, overtly anxious or extraordinarily concerned. Uh, it's a serious matter, uh, a very serious matter. But to go along with these things, you have to remember this. Uh, in this 120-day period, you're going to have voting 24-7 so that the, so the things can be decided, worked out, uh, etc. Legalities are going to be based in common law. Uh, that's totally different from the uh, maritime or admiralty uh, code and statute that we live under now. An extraordinary difference. So people need to be aware that a lot of the things that they were familiar with or knew well are getting ready to change. That answer it? That more than answers it. Um, I need to make a quick announcement to uh, Wilshire <coughs> Radio uh, listeners. Uh, at this time, we are not planning to take call-ins uh, today. We have a tremendous amount of information to go over and a lot of clarification uh, to get to. So I would appreciate uh, everybody just kind of listening in and uh, hearing what's put out uh, so we can get this information done in the two hours that we have. Uh, okay. With that said, uh, I think it's a, an appropriate time to take the opportunity to talk about uh, the mass arrests. Um, the people that are on the list I don't think are going to surprise anybody, uh, but I would like you to speak to the people that are going to be surprised about uh, maybe the pe some people that they thought were going to be on the list but don't get arrested. Uh, if you could kind of uh, smooth those ruffled feathers that might be occurring when uh, that comes out as to uh, – the possible reasons why. I know you can't go into detail, and I know why, but uh, maybe speak on the subject. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a trick question, actually. Um, people are going to find that the uh, laundry list of names is going to be a lot of people that they have uh, seen on TV and know or feel that they knew. Uh, you're going to find some people that you don't know at all, and then you're going to find some whom you thought might have been uh, – on the bad side, who actually weren't. Now, to go along with that, uh, you've also got some people who have already uh, started making a deal. And the deal is, is that they don't uh, break rocks in the hot sun for 50 years uh, in exchange for explaining how things work, how you did this, who you did it with, names, dates, places, that sort of thing. Now, something that people don't know and are not aware of is there is two, and has been, two intelligence uh, groups. Uh, varying agencies have multiplicities. These multiplicities are good guys and bad guys. The good guys have been collecting data on the bad guys, of course, vice versa as well. But the thing is that it's kind of hard for a judge to uh, ignore the videotape. Now, is that you? And, you know, when you look right at the camera, it's pretty obvious, okay? When you hear a person's voice saying such and such when they probably shouldn't have said anything at all, 
Uh, that gives you a pretty good uh, idea as to what to go on in terms of whether or not the person's dirty or not. This involves, in, in terms of the dirt, now this is another thing. Some people actually went out and honestly uh, invested and made money. And some of these rich people that everybody would uh, think they would be dirty uh, by assumption or association aren't. They're simple, honest people who accidentally fell over a good deal. They took the good deal. And some of them, uh, a lot of people don't get this, some of them, in terms of the amount that they had to put in, was greater than they had. They borrowed against their car, their wife, you know, whatever, uh, took those funds because they believed in what they were doing and invested them and uh, in some form or another. These are the honest ones, and they will not be included on the list, and it's, some of the names will probably sur surprise some people. A lot of the names that are directly associated and well-known will be more than obvious. So then again, you have to remember, if somebody knows stuff that we that nobody can has been able to figure out or has uh, really great information on, they might mitigate their sentencing. In other words, they won't hang them, uh, et cetera, uh, or execute them in some other form or fashion. Um, if they help him out. Well, the guy saved his life. Now, what he ends up with depends on how deep it goes, what he can do for the good good side, the good guys, how he can help. And if some of these people tr truly turn out to be uh, key people, as I've heard they are, then you've got a situation where uh, that help might be worth uh, not even incarcerating them. Now, that don't mean they walk away with anything other than the clothes on their back. Don't misunderstand that. You might see some fat bankers sitting on the curb going, now what do I do? Just like a lot of unemployed people I know. So there's a lot of variation in this, and it's going to be up to a combination of what they did, how much they're willing to help to rectify that, and exactly uh, where it all goes to. So, you know... Um, I've heard information uh, on several occasions that uh, implicate a lot of people that uh, people are kind of looking for to maybe help uh, straighten things out. And so that, to me, was a, a bit of a little, a little bit of a shocker or a surprise. Uh, I agree. But, <laughs> well, well, what you got to remember is that I deal with the people that are doing this, and so I mm -hmm. get information directly from the horse's mouth and. That's a considerable difference between hearing rumors of this and uh, little snippets of that uh, on whatever website that's trying to make everybody go cha-ching, grab your gun, man, it's time. Ooh, you know, uh, people don't yep. need that. We got enough, we got enough trouble trying to make sure the kids are are uh, fed and behaving. I mean, you know, that sort of thing. We don't need all the extra any extra stuff right now. We could use some un some employment. I will agree with that, and I understand that the um, some this is this is this goes along with this. So I'm gonna add it. Um, one of the things about the collateral accounts is that they will have uh, fund funds and funding managers. By that I mean that the accounts there's going to be a certain amount of money to uh, a foundation, and a certain uh, specific person will be uh, handling the foundation. In other words, you go and you present your case, and then that case is decided on its merit and uh, may be funded even more than what is being asked for. The variations in, in this go to a combination of character, judgment, uh, common sense, simple things. So this is something to, be, to, to understand. If there's a way to create uh, 5,000 jobs instead of 500, and there's not that much money difference in terms of what it is to start with, what would you do? I know what I'd do. 5,000 jobs in certain areas? My goodness. Um, you know, the extraordinary difference between what has been and what has been taking place is, as I said, extraordinary. It's almost, it's, it's a shock. It's unbelievable. So, you know, everybody kind of, you know, hunker down and hold on because it's coming. I agree. Um, <laughs> and the only thing that I kind of wanted to, uh, add on to the end of that is uh, let's just say that uh, I've uh, been told that there's going to probably be a certain urge or reaction 
for people to uh, want to take matters into their own hands uh, with, with the fact that uh, when some people don't get arrested, there's going to be a damn good reason for it. And well, it's going to take some time to put out the information as to say why. And I would equate this to a RICO investigation, except <laughs> we're, in essence, taking down a worldwide criminal organization that has been in power for hundreds of years. And <laughs> there's been some participation uh, by moles, let's say, or undercover informants or people that worked with the bad guys so we could build a case against the bad guys type of situation. And yep. I think it's important to let everybody know that just because you think they should be getting arrested doesn't mean you know the whole story. <laughs> exactly. Now, one of the things about that is that the there's going to be a, uh, a laundry list, as I said. There's also going to be a list of why nots. These are supposed to be presented one after the other. So, and at the time, as I understand it, that they uh, release this information, the arrests will be taking place publicly. They will have called the news and say, you know, come over and get your pictures. So, you know, this is something to remember. And if someone, just because somebody thinks something is one way does not mean necessarily that it is only that way. Um, anybody that's had uh, dealings in terms of the military knows for a fact that uh, in tactics you have a dual tactical capability. You might be moving troops and those troops may be moving into an area that will uh, assist the good guys in the end. So seeing people uh, that supposedly don't look quite right in the, in the wrong place and that sort of thing may or may not be what you think it might be. And this is something to bear in mind. Uh, at the right time, all of this comes out. So, hopefully that helps. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, going on from there, <clears throat> uh, there has been a lot of talk about subjects like NDAA and uh, uh, martial law and the powers of, that the president has given himself, uh, the ability to take over the airwaves as emergency communications, a lot of uh, FEMA preparations. Uh, I've heard, you know, MREs, plastic coffins, and bullets are, you know, got a lot of uh, talk in the blogosphere. Um, mm -hmm. I recently got some information that shed some light on all of the uh, positive ways that all of those uh, preparations could be used and not just the negative, you know, martial laws taking over everything and, uh, you know, be aware, grab your guns if you see troops in the streets type of behavior. Um, maybe... Uh, Maybe you could uh, take some time to throw some water on that fire. <laughs> well, um, yeah, there's uh, several things uh, that goes into that. Um, primarily, um, uh, to give you an example, um, if you move troops, uh, the that troop movement might be into a general area. But it also can be used as a cover for moving other things or more troops. Either way, in combination, it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is what the ultimate reasoning for doing what you're doing is. Now, the, the thing about uh, the angst of the military takeover, this was already discussed once. And the senior uh, military um, asked the simple question, what in the world would you want to do that for? We're supposed to be going back to our founding documents and the original way we were supposed to be governed, not making it worse. So that didn't that only lasted about two or three minutes as an entertaining idea. The other part of this is that uh, some people know, some don't, that I have addressed the troops. 
Uh, you can find a copy of that or a recording of it on freedomrange.us. The thing about the addressment of the troops was to give them uh, succinct information as to their dealings with civilians. This is in their field manual and in the uh, Uniform Code of Military Justice. You don't engage civilians. So uh, this then, was, the second part of the recommendation on that was the disposition. That means where you would get a directive or order from a higher up to do something that's not cool. You do not have to follow those orders. Now, anybody that has a computer and decides to look in history, I was just following orders, didn't go very well at the Nuremberg trials. Everybody who used that defense got convicted. So it's also the same thing true here. Um, there were several incidents that I know of uh, and was close to uh, in Vietnam that uh, uh, had the same sort of uh, problems. Uh, where somebody, uh, whomever, at whatever level, decided arbitrarily to do such and such, and it wasn't a good idea, okay? What you have to remember is that uh, because of this addressment, then the fact that, that, that addressing the troops went like wildfire across the planet is this. Um, the only engagement by the military of... Uh, civilians uh, takes place on a crowd control basis only and that's only during extraordinary conditions um, then it's happened a few times where troops are called out and this and that the other part of this is that uh, even though uh, posse comitatus has been uh, revoked supposedly the uh, field manual and the, code, and the military code says that uh, you don't do that. So I decided to ask, and I got word back from about five or six active duty troops. First of all, they said that uh, we was going to go grab Granny out of her house, see what kind of goodies she had in her cupboard and that sort of thing. Some of them, uh, 90 some percent of them said, no, we won't do that. Oh, that's reassuring. Well, what about martial law then? And the answer, and people may not like the French, but it was hell no. That's 98%. Now, I want you to take those two numbers and look at the other side of it. Is 10% of the United States military forces going to control this country? They'd be lucky to control a uh, daycare, <laughs> from what I've seen of some of the kids I've seen lately. Uh, so, no, they're not going to do that. The only the thing is that there are also good and bad in the military, just as well as there are out here. You've got people who would uh, refer to um, certain things as gospel, um, and I'll attend to one of those. Um, well, no, I won't. I'll let uh, I'll let uh, Keith handle that. Um, the uh, link to the uh, interview with Keith. Um, I believe should be on the Freedom Rain, or, uh, Freedom Rain's website, uh, Facebook page somewhere. Listen to that very carefully. In it, he gives uh, uh, good detail as to how the idea of socialism, control of wealth, and control of the people came about. Um, very in the very near future, I'll be coming. We will be coming out with another recording. Uh, that further states the same sorts of things. The uh, idea was a bait and switch. You say you're going to do one thing, and you turn around and do something else. Um, this is commonplace. Uh, the voice of the people are not listening to in terms of legislation. We'll have right now. Do what? I think that uh, the bait and switch is uh, a real fear the pe what people have right now is that they're told that it's going to be a nice, safe transition, but they worry that it's a precursor to martial law and the New World Order taking over and yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I, I know I've well, heard those comments in the past, so um, go ahead and you know, address that exact line. All right. Um, the military has, under force of arms, uh, told people, no, you ain't doing that. Now, I'm talking about presidents, senators, congressmen, you name it. 
secretaries of state, uh, you, uh, just about every level at one point or another. There are certain things that uh, are not going to happen. One of those is that the, um, and I'll use the word righteous uh, by uh, way of the idea of purity in terms of action. The righteousness of uh, things is this. Uh, God gave us the freedom of will. Believe or not, as you so choose. That will, that freedom, the idea that uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is given to us by God and not a man or a government, uh, is what ba is the basis for uh, a lot of what people believe. So long as a person does not waver in that belief, how does one person control 50 or 100? They don't. You can only shoot so much, uh, so many of us before we get a hold of you, if that, if it would come to something of that nature. So now I'm going to say it again. 98% of the military said they're not going to go along with martial law. 2% of however many is not very many. Add the civilian population supporting the military who are acting correctly and you've got a formidable force I mean <laughs> gun sales continue to set records so you got an armed citizenry ready to back up the military now add to that law enforcement this is supposed to be a peaceful transition this means that the rioting and all the other gobbledygook that everybody envisions uh, is not going to be allowed there are a combination of both militias police and military make uh, a majority pretty much and when the citizens understand that they're going to stand in the way of somebody coming into someone's house without a warrant illegally and doing nasty things uh, I'd be on the side of the people standing in the way myself even if I didn't have an arm if I didn't have if I didn't have a weapon so <laughs> the difference the difference lies in the willingness to dedicate uh, whatever it takes in terms of service to both the country as it should be and the beliefs of freedom of the people in terms of the God-given authority to be free and that's basically where it lies if you believe if anyone believes this in terms of uh, the fact that you can uh, take care of the problems uh, and it may not be one person's idea it might take 50 to come up with the right one Everybody will recognize it, and it don't matter where it comes from. It could be a little child who sees with the clarity of a child. It could be an old guy. Who knows? Just because he's been there for 50, 60, 70, 80 years, whatever. Um, it, it, goes, it goes deeper uh, in terms of uh, the understanding of the belief of the, uh, the oaths that have been taken. Uh, my oath of service... Uh, put me in a in a, a very funny situation. It haunted me because I didn't do anything with it for a, while, a long time. I tried to ignore Amen. it and it wouldn't leave me alone. So that's where I'm at. I I, I follow that. Next question. Okay, so um, I th I know you've said this in the past, but I think it's important to reiterate at this time especially. Uh, the average citizen that uh, is going to be dealing with this situation is not the people listening to us right now. Um, there's people that are more well-informed and more well aware of what's going on right now, and those people uh, can make special preparations during this time. And <clears throat> I think it's safe to say you give those people some special instructions about what needs to be done when these changes go down and advice that they can give their neighbors and their family and their friends. Um, so could you cover that and put in some details that uh, maybe we haven't gone over before, but uh, definitely reiterate uh, what we need to do as the awake and aware people to control this transition and make it as easy and safe as we can for everybody in the country. 
Well, first of all, um, those people who are aware and awake um, probably have a certain gift of gab. A certain gift of gab goes to talking about things that you don't normally discuss, be that religion or politics in a bar or whatever the situation may be. The other part of it is <clears throat> you're going to find that the people who are awake and are aware and do have an idea as to how things should be will end up basically being put in charge by the will of the people. I mean, uh, it's very simple. Uh, either you do want to take the responsibility for uh, your freedom or you don't. Now, I don't like the idea of leadership in a lot of ways, but the main thing is this. You look in the mirror every morning and that's your leader. Now. You have to understand that there are a couple of things that goes into this. Primarily, people have been divorced from uh, feeling uh, different ways about things. And that's been done through movies, TV, um, general social attitudes, uh, etc. The uh, basic quality that everybody needs to listen to is their conscience. This is what tells you, this is what makes women go, oh, when they see a little baby something or another, human or otherwise. Uh, it's where uh, the big, strong uh, bad boy on the football team uh, takes a liking to a little kitten and takes care of it. It comes from the heart. It's similar to what uh, people feel in the way of comfort when they crawl up on grandma's lap. What you need to be able to do, very simply, is to give that away to everybody you know. You can also, within a a group, and I'll say, I'll pick a number, say 100 people. Out of that group of 100 people, there might be 10 or 15 who are aware. One of those who's aware is going to have the courage to voice, hey, we don't need to do this. We need to do this the right way. And here's the reason. Everybody has been subject at one form, at one time or another, of being squatted upon by authority. And I'm not talking about the kind of authority that is needed where a child needs to be corrected, this sort of thing. I'm talking about authority that I'm in charge and you're not. And I don't care if you don't like it. Um, that idea of authoritarianism uh, needs to be based on one thing. A true leader is going to do the right thing, and no that right what. thing is going to that right thing is going to come from within. And the part within is called a conscience. Everybody's got one. You don't step on little baby birds. You put them back in the nest if you if you know how to do that, um, or even like I used to do, raise them until they can fly and turn them loose. Um, it's up to the individual to get back in touch with their conscience as to how to be, how to act. Go back to the 50s and think about it. Uh, Leave it to Beaver was a good example of a lot of things. Uh, it might be a dorky show, but it's also right on. So in terms of helping each other, you need to get to know your neighbor. You need to say hi to the guy that you see every day in the street when you walk by each other. You need to get to know people just at least on site, if nothing else. What this does is this allows for people to be familiar enough to form a small group or an organization, and thereby someone in the, in the group or somebody, someone someone knows about who needs things, it can be taken care of. This is supposed to be the giving society. This is supposed to be the helping my brother idea that was that was fostered at the beginning of this country and this has to be the new take on things forget war anybody who's been to war knows better anybody who hasn't probably doesn't think it's all that great of an idea and i'll give a real good simile to that when you're playing your war game on your uh, xbox or whatever pause that sucker and get a real good look at it then put yourself in there and think about it. You won't want to go there. Why? Well, it's good for absolutely nothing, just like the song says. So if people work together 
in, in terms of a common goal, 15, 20 people can raise a barn like the Amish do now and like we used to do in, in our past. If somebody need, really needed a new cabin, everybody decide, hey, you know, he really does, you know, and he's a good guy. And why don't we do that? Okay. And you just go do it. You take care of the things that need to be fixed because if you don't fix them, you're responsible for it. There's real simple moral uh, obligations that you make to yourself. So that's basically the answer to that one. Yes, and thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> you touched on a subject that I want you to go into a little bit more detail on, and I'll preface it. <clears throat> Uh, anybody that spent time in the military uh, and the veterans that are returning home from Afghanistan and Iraq currently are, you know, having some big problems. Uh, suicide rate is through the roof. Uh, PTSD is a big problem. And um, I've characterized that very clearly in uh, my radio shows and my interviews is these troops are returning home and seeing the disconnect of the United States from what's really going on over in those countries. And I think uh, we should take a couple of minutes to stress why <laughs> the military understands the need for this transition and why uh, it's important to the troops and the veterans, why they know better. Um, Vietnam was the same as Iraq, was the same as Afghanistan. I went through it, you've been through it, and I know from personal experience that what was happening on the ground, in the sand, was very, very different than what I saw when I got home as to what people understood was going on. Um, and I kind of want you to touch on that or comment on it as to why the military is not going to be the enemy in this transition, why they're going to be the peacekeepers, and what the understanding is of the soldiers and sailors that have returned home because of seeing what's actually going on, seeing the real world outside of the U.S. borders. Can you touch on that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, if you didn't go, you don't know. Now, the word no uh, entails a lot of things. Uh, the basis for the word in the context I'm using it is the Greek word gnosko, which is an experiential knowledge uh, anyone who has been under arms understands the difference between a battlefield and coming home. The disconnect is that nobody wants to know about war. It is not fit for human consumption. Uh, it's not, and never has been, a good idea. It's not generally perpetrated by men, but by governments. Taking all this a step further, um, when I left, things were a certain way. When I come back, I was wondering just exactly what country I had been fighting for because it was that much different in only a year. Now, I only did one tour. I know of some people who did several. They were able to handle the uh, extraordinary conditions of uh, life, death, and battlefield um, better than I could. Now, part of the reason I couldn't go back was that uh, uh, I got injured and disabled pretty much. So uh, that kind of put me out of the play. But um, I hear this story all the time. I got nightmares. I got this problem. Uh, I hear a funny noise, and, and all of a sudden I'm back in the battlefield. This is very real, and people don't understand why. Well, the reason why is that a little click-click or a little whistle or something of that nature in the conditions and under the conditions of a battlefield can mean the difference between life and death, not only for you, but other people as well. Now, troops, when they work together, get to know each other. And one of the horrors that uh, 
uh, got impressed upon me in my first month in Vietnam was having a guy that I liked real well get splattered all over me. That sort of hardened me to a lot of things. But it also stuck in my mind. Now, here's the trick. First of all, a person who comes back is no longer on the battlefield. But the, but the switch of battle readiness has been flipped. This goes to the basis of the psychology of the individual. It's permanent. But you do not have to live with a savage renegade of nightmares and BS driving you to the brink and taking your own life or uh, beating people up that shouldn't be uh, knowing you that, that well, etc. What the difference is this? You come back and you find out that this is a war zone of a different type. And this is the reason for my involvement. Um, I came back and I thought the war was over. And it wasn't. It was just sneakier. And I went, man, now what do I do? Well, for a long time I got involved with every kind of veterans thing that was going on you can imagine. Uh, and tried my best to make the VA do their thing the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, I mean, they went around the first 20 years denying that uh, battle fatigue or shell shock, better known as PTSD today, didn't exist when they knew very well that it did. Then they spent the next 20 years trying to figure out ways to deny paying somebody or helping them with the problem that they had created. So now, mine was there is a form syndrome. of governance. Yeah. Hold on a minute. That not necessarily is up to the VA. You got to remember they are under people in the DOD, and the DOD can tell them what to do in a large way. Uh, so the situation is this: the military, in general, is dog tired of being the bad guys. They know better. It's called honor. It's called integrity. It's called uh, making sure that uh, you're watching the back of your buddy so that there's not a problem. It's uh, it's called taking care of people who cannot fight for themselves. You fight for them. That sort of ideology that has always been there and has been suppressed slowly and done away with slowly. And then there's the disconnect. This is where you got drones. This is where you get into the video game of war. Uh, most of the people that come back don't want to play war games. They don't want to watch the movies simply because they've been there and they know, and they do not want to experience any more of that. So they kind of tend to hide. They withdraw a little bit. They can't even talk to the people that they love simply because it's too extraordinarily painful. Well, the reason I got involved in this is that I always thought being free would be a cool thing to be, first of all. But the second part of it that kind of haunted me, and I couldn't quite put my finger on and answer it, came to me the other day. And it's very simple. I am working towards the day when I can put my guns down permanently, where I don't have to wake up in the middle of the night because there's a noise and it might be some form of enemy. That's exactly what I'm working for. And that's a personal part of why I'm involved in this and why I'm doing what I do. My oath of service doesn't have an expiration date. And it kept telling me that, and I couldn't hear. One day I heard that, and I went, wow, that's interesting. So that's basically where I'm at, and this is, those are the reasons for the disconnect. General population don't have a war. There's not a war zone going on. I mean, you know, other than maybe in a, a very extraordinary war in a large city, maybe. I mean, you know, so there it is. Next. Okay, um, I'm going to pass the mic to Eva real quick. She has a quick comment. I just want to thank you, Drake, because um, that was very heartfelt. And also, just a little backup, when we were prepping today before the call, um, we did cover the idea that the war is sneaky, and Bill brought up the idea that it's actually um, a debt enslavement war. It's an inform lack of information or disinformation. Um uh, so I'll pass it back to you, Bill, but thank you, Jake. That was wonderful. Yeah, well, <clears throat> and I'll reiterate on that. Um, 
I think another aspect of what the military realizes is that uh, they weren't over there fighting for what they were told they were fighting for when they got there. When you get there and you start seeing what's going on and the realities of war, you start seeing that what you're really fighting for is somebody's profit. You're really fighting so somebody can make a buttload of money. And that's what I think gets to the military members the most and why they're best suited to be peacekeepers and understanding and leaders during this transition because they've seen the consequences of war. They know that there are people being hurt all over the world for the profiteering of multi-corporations that love to debt enslave other countries and profit from them. And our country, um, I've characterized it as, you know, been in World War III for quite some time, and the weapon that's being used against us is debt. And the only way to win this war is to take away the weapon. And so I think what people are going to find out is that this transition period is going to be a disarming of the true weapon of war, which is debt. And debt is going to be replaced by prosperity and the money from the Keenan lawsuit and the understanding of other countries and where the resources of the world need to go are going to be directed to good projects and people that know how to get things done and secret technology that's been locked up in a safe at the patent office for decades so that uh, pharmaceutical companies and uh, fossil fuel companies and financial companies and insurance companies can continue to make money. Um, but the time for profiting off of the back and the sweat of the rest of society is over, and the new society is going to be concentrating on how to help your neighbor, how to make sure that everybody gets ahead, not just you. And so, you know, that's the direction I see things moving in. Um, with the information that I got yesterday, you know, even though it was a little – holy crap for me to, you know, take in because there are some details in there that I wasn't prepared for, but I'm assimilating. Uh, but I think it's important to uh, remind everybody that we do have some natural born leaders out there and uh, they may not think of themselves that way. I know you didn't and I know I didn't, but uh, getting involved and getting in this quote unquote fight has been an honor and a privilege. Even though it's been hell, it more than makes up for some of the things that I've done in my life in my military career. So, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to, you know, honor my oath of office, to honor the Navy Corps values, honor, courage, commitment, and to stick through these hard times and see it to the end. <coughs> Uh, I'm going to pass the mic. Eva has a question for you, Drake. Okay. Where do you see Bradley Manning and the whole issue with his um, being held? How do you foresee this playing out? Well, uh, we're going to end up with a – we're going to end up with what's called um, a release of information, an outing. Uh, some of that has already started. Um, you're no longer going to have um, the secretiveness that has been going on in the past. This includes all finance and all governance. It's going to be transparent, as people like to use the word loosely. Uh, the idea of hidden agendas and the, and the other fun and games uh, are going to be done away with. People who have not uh, followed things other than their conscience when they found things that were not right and outed them 
I will suggest that they're going to be turned loose and absolved of all uh, convictions of whatever nature they might be. This goes back to a combination of things. Uh, one is morality, and the other one is uh, common law. Common law states, if there's no injured party and no damaged property, you didn't break the law. Now, that don't mean that you can go get raped and drunk and be a problem and not be absconded with. Well, they take you down, put you in jail, let you sleep it off. Next day, might even give you a ride back to your car that they did not tow. That sort of thing. Uh, instead of charging a kid with a felony for drinking beer, they used to pour the beer out and make sure that one of us was sober enough to drive us all home and tell us that if they didn't, we didn't act right. follow you home to make sure you got home okay, too. Well, there was another part of that. If we didn't go home, he would uh, take us into temporary custody or under his control and take us to our parents. And uh, I didn't want to deal with my dad on that level. That would be extraordinarily painful for quite some time. So then I, well, and then after he got done, Mom would uh, mess me up. So uh, it's called it's called basic, you know, uh, common law. If you don't, you know, if you don't really screw up, don't worry about it a lot. Now, the other part of this is morality. Uh, everybody should commonly know and understand that you cannot legislate morality. It ain't possible. And if anybody takes exception to the idea that it may be, look at all the different divisions in religious belief. So the uh, best thing I've come up with so far that goes along with my conscience real well is called the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, that sort of pretty much covers everything that I can think of. So, and that includes critters, bugs, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, it, it, when you when these things are applied, okay, and they have to, they're going to have to be reapplied, and there's a simple reason for it. Um, our planet is not unlimited in terms of size. It's not unlimited to where you can get away from everybody anymore. But you could get some pretty good peaceful places. Um, the problem is that you have to learn to, like it or not, doesn't matter the difference uh, between you and someone else, uh, be able to at least uh, coexist. You might hate each other's guts, that's fine, but you're not allowed to spread that. And you're right in where the other person's nose begins. So nobody gets to throw the first punch or any of that. You don't egg people on. That ain't the right thing to do. Doing to others, would you like to have somebody doing that to you? No. Very simple. It's not complicated. This basically, like I said, it covers it. And then you have a little thing called a conscience. And you get these ideas. Some of them are pretty squirrely, depending on how crazy you might be at one given point or another, how much you've had to drink. Um, but you got that little conscience in there saying, dude, that ain't a good idea. Don't have that 15th beer or whatever the reason might be. Uh, it's not cool to drive too fast or whatever. Any old thing. Application. Society is going to have to change from two things. The idea that they can do anything they want to and get away with it, and the idea of convenience. A lot of the problems are caused by instant gratification, where you used to have to save up to get to whatever it was you wanted. Uh, now you can run a credit card by it and snatch it up right now. All of these sorts of things are going to start to change. Now, that don't mean that you're going back to the 1500s and a little, little mud shack. <laughs> what it means is that uh, the idea of the manner in which you conduct yourself and your life and your attitude toward others has to fundamentally change. Part of the fundamental change is that instead of having a standing armed military ready to blow you away at any second, you're going to have a the huge the, the biggest job corps you've ever seen in your life. These guys are going to need something to do. Well, what did you do before you became a came into the military? Oh, I was a farmer. Okay, you need to go such and such. We got farmers out there that need help. Take about 15, 20 guys. You pick them and and you know talk to them, find out if they know something, and go. That ideology is what I understand. The plan stipulates in terms of the general action to be taken. So you got to look at these things. Think about the reality. You know, somebody's too old and can't cut the grass anymore. You cut the grass for them. You don't worry about you know getting gas paid back or any of that. You just do it. So there it is. 
<laughs> yep, and I want to kind of follow on with that, that uh, I'm uh, more on the technological side of the house and what's going on on that front after uh, the transition starts. Um, I am aware of a couple of brain-boggling projects that are going to get underway, and there's going to be plenty of work to be done, and there's going to be plenty of things that need to be done, and something that's going to change in the U.S. is we're going to start building things again. We have gotten away from that for far too long. We have been a service-based industry and nation to make money. We're going to go back to building some things, and the things we're going to build, you're going to like them. They ain't going to be microwaves and weed whackers. They're going to be stuff you've never even dreamed of. So uh, I'll just follow it up with that. And uh, I think we're going to transition into a new area. Uh, I wanted to talk about you, uh, some of the fear porn that's out there um, and your take on it. Uh, the first and most obvious one that's coming up is Chicago and the uh, NATO conference, and then immediately after that is the G8 summit at Camp David. Uh, how do you see those going down? Well, um, first of all, you got to know what's going on. Um, basically, both of those are a now what do we do kind of thing. Um, the banks are under extraordinary uh disruption right now so that kind of screws the finances all up so that means that the thieves can't steal too much anymore and they're wondering what uh, what they're supposed to do because the people have got the gotten the idea that they can be free and that they don't have to put up with that anymore and these people that are involved might just go to jail they don't like that very much so they're trying to figure out what kind of wiggle room they've got that's the basic one of the basics of it the other thing was that uh, people have made uh, trips to foreign countries, some of our dignitaries, and basically what they were doing was they were begging for money. Now, if that does not elucidate as to the problems, if that doesn't enlighten people as to the extraordinary situation, I don't know what will. I really don't. Now, I've got some uh, communications I'm going to make after this show um, that contain inter a combination of interviews, one of those with uh, Keith, uh, is already making its rounds, and I've got a couple of other ones that are going to come out that uh, are going to pretty much shock some people. Uh, there are people that uh, are intrinsically guilty, knowing they have been for generations. Uh, as you stated, the financial fun and game started uh, hundreds of years ago. Try about try over 300. Um, the secret organizations that uh, operate in this elite group are coming unglued. And by unglued, uh, <laughs> there's several of these groups that uh, decided, uh, the underlings decided they didn't like taking orders of the nature they were given. So they absconded with the treasury and they're floating around the country with it. Uh, <laughs> so some of these large uh, inside groups all of a sudden, not only can't they get a bank loan because the bank's broke, but they, their own individual buddies have taken off with the funds and they're not going to give them back, and they can't find them. So what do you do? You go nuts. You get desperate. You do desperate things. Part of that was uh, evidenced uh, in recent trips, trips to China, and China won't have anything to do with them. The uh, people who um, inherited the collateral accounts are living in China. So that should give everybody a heads up that uh, no, You'll find that uh, people have gone to the Philippines in military force and have been standing opposed. No, you can't have what's in those mountains. Sorry. Uh, and this is going on in several different places. Uh, the cabal, as such, bad guys, whatever you want to call it, are coming unglued. Uh, they got no place to hide, and they've got no place to run. And the... Uh, the idea of uh, even living in a cave won't quite get it. Uh, that's not secret enough because everybody now knows, or the people that it counts with, now knows exactly where those things are at. Uh, and um, unlocking the door is not too much of a problem 
no matter what it's made of. So yeah, it gets it gets more and more extraordinary. The more you delve into it, the deeper you get into it. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, people are totally unaware of in terms of the, the, the basis for a combination of legal, financial, uh, and moral circumstance. And what what that goes to is that a lot of this stuff is planned and plotted. And there's a, everybody can see this. This is real simple. Have you noticed? You start, you get, you get, everybody, you and the wife get a raise at work. And that means that she can work normal hours. You work about an hour or two overtime. And you're actually getting ahead of things a little bit. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, uh, Within about a month or so of that, the cost of living, as people like to put a handle on it, uh, adjusts to a point where she's got to work some overtime, you've got to work a lot of it just to keep your head above water. This is the type of planning that was used in uh, the Great Depression, all of your wars. Um, what people don't know is that the bankers fund both sides. They did so in the Civil War here, and it's, it's more obvious. And those, uh, that financing leads back to the families responsible, uh, some of whom we're still dealing with the ancestors of today. And these crooks and criminals feel that they have the right of absolute total rulership over everybody and everything. And this is the reason that they need to be taken out so that they don't have that opportunity. And that process, by the way, um, is at a point where it can't be turned back. We're already past the point of no return. So everybody needs to get get aware of what's going on, and there's a lot of places to do that. Um, then you got then you got uh, uh, fear sites. Ooh, we got Russian troops in Colorado. Ooh, uh, Timbuktu land has uh, tanks up in Canada. Oh my goodness! Uh, you can go on and on with that. Well. Um, <laughs> It's it's all all well and good. Uh, stack up what you want, but if uh, somebody decided to uh, come into this country, I want you to think about this. You got maybe five percent, ten percent at most of the standing military that would stand opposed to the people. The rest of it, including the citizens, and we're setting gun sale records every year, uh, are going to stand opposed with everything they got. Reason being is you're coming after my backyard and my family, and I'm going to protect that. So uh, it's a different type of a fight, and most of the people with any kind of a sense at all, even those that stand opposed, are going to say, I don't think it's worth it. Now, you're going to have a few, and, and this is already a given. There's uh, several places that I know of that are going to be attended to uh, strictly by armed forces, and the reason is that they know that there is going to be armed resistance when they go inside. No other reason, other than that these people are uh, better versed in what to do than the average person. So, uh, you know, a lot of factors in it. Next question. Okay, I have a quick two other questions. The first is the um, downed plane, uh, I think it was around April 29th, that contained like four tons of cocaine that they're kind of pointing back to the CIA. Do you have any direct information about that? And then also the drones over Washington, D.C. Um, do you have any information on either of those specifics? Well, <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to tell everybody in case they don't know and they've been living in a cave, but uh, forces of certain agencies in our own government are the dope dealers of the world. Um, all you have to do is uh, check the flights that go in and out of this Golden Triangle area, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, drones can be used either direction. Uh, if they're not armed, then they're surveillance. And that is a part of the divorcement from the personal portion of war. A guy's operating a joystick in an office someplace, controlling the thing. Now. Uh, that person probably wouldn't have any problem pulling the trigger. He's not there, or she, as the case may be. But if you take that same person, stand him opposed to a living human being, uh, who also might be armed and actually shoot back, um, things change. People hesitate. People think about what they're doing. 
Um, when you get to a certain point, you're going to have um, a problem with changing people's minds. And the divorcement, the idea that uh, violence is okay, this and that, um, it permeates our society. The idea of making a society violent is so that when you uh, mess with them enough, they rise up and become violent. And that's the idea. This is a part of the, quote, auxiliary or alternate plan to the good plan, where you have a reason for martial law if everybody's rising up. Well, the only problem with that is that, uh, wait a minute, you got troops that are joining up with them. And the sheriff's with them. Well, what are we going to do? Uh, maybe we might want to just surrender. I mean, I, I, my suggestion is that they do. Um, so you have to look at everything uh, in a little bit different light than what people think about in terms of specifics. It's not a, it's not just a non-specific with a drone. Um, meetings have been moved around because of drone drone presence or black choppers uh, with people swinging from ropes. Uh, that's already happened a couple of times that I know of in the recent uh, past. So you have to understand that um, it may not be the bad guys. It might be the good guys. And they might just be playing the uh, psychological or psyops game with the enemy, saying, ha-ha, I can see in your office window even though you are 23 stories up. How about that? You know. Um, <laughs> so as I have been reiterating uh, over and over, a lot of things are two-way street. Now, I disagree with the dope dealing in a lot of ways. Um, it does a bunch of bad things, both to the people that do it and to people who haven't, don't have anything to do with it. The idea that uh, all drugs uh, should be legal is not exactly the way things should be uh, in reality. What should happen, and this is the change in society I've been trying to express, is that if a person is taught how to get the same rush they do when they snort a line of cocaine without the drugs, then there's no need for the drugs. That's an extraordinary idea, but it's just as real as anything that you've got in your hand, the, de the chair you're sitting on or the desk you're sitting by. Uh, if somebody wants to know something about that, go to Humanity Healing. Uh, that's a website that uh, I've been a, an advisor on, and uh, it'll teach you how to get that rush. And believe me, it's extraordinary um, when you understand how you can activate and become a participant with your spiritual self. Everybody's got one. At least that's what God says, and I'll let him. He knows more about all that than I do, and I'll let him run that. But uh, you can get in touch with it. Uh, maybe actually do some things with it, but that's, you know, that's the individual. Some people don't like the idea of airy-fairy uh, ETs, angels, and all this watching over us. Well, that's all, all well and good, except that the Bible says that you do got a, a guardian angel to make sure when you're a kid you're not stupid enough to really get hurt or hurt somebody else real bad. Okay. Uh, people say, well, psychic scientists, ooh, mind readers. Well... I'm a, I just got one simple question to that. How does a mom know when her kid's a block and a half away and they fall off their bike and get hurt that the kid got hurt? And I've seen this. I've seen my, I was, you know, I was in the house. My sister fell off her bike and she's like a block and a half away and it hurt like a mother. She got some cinders in her, in her kneecaps from it. I mean, really skinned them good. And, uh, mom knew she was hurt and hurt bad. And, she threw the dish towel down, dropped the apron on the way out the front door, and I'm skittering right along behind her. Um, you know, I've experienced it. Other people have, too, I'm sure. So tell me how uncommon things are. Um, as I said, you go back toward the 50s when I was growing up, and uh, you get the idea in terms of their moral compass, in terms of how things should be, the respect both, both ways of a child who's respectful at whatever age, uh, be that all the way through young adult. Uh, and the return to respect. That person has lived the 35, 40 years I'm just beginning. And they might, might just know something I don't. And they might just know that I shouldn't really climb this fence or whatever. So, you know, in my day, uh, any adult had the right to uh, discipline a child. 
Now, if you were related, they could put their hands on you with no questions. <laughs> and believe me, uh, I'll I'll put any combat veteran fully armed up against Mama with a broom when she's mad any day of the week, <laughs> and I'll put money on Mom. Just that simple. Uh, <clears throat> well, my grandma, at the great age of 84, broke her hip trying to jump a six-foot fence chasing a coyote with a broom. So, you know, I don't know if that's stupid or she just was mad and, and forgot what she's not supposed to do, but, you know, it's, it's just as real as anything else. So hopefully that answers those. So what I hear you saying, uh, as far as uh, disclosure and divine intervention, uh, we might want to get our brains prepared for something that uh, has been told as bogus uh, by the world in general. Does that sound right? Well, it's it, it, yeah, but the thing is, a lot of people just ain't gonna believe it, and I'll I, I'll just let them, you know, be aware, look around, watch what's going on, and you'll start seeing it. Uh, God doesn't hide from anybody, and He kind of enjoys messing up and messing with our minds, or He wouldn't have made uh, artichokes and gira giraffes. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, where did feathers come from? Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, you want to get into answers, you show me the scientists that can answer that, and they can't. So that tells me that our idea of uh, knowing everything don't go very far. Um, I just leave it, leave it open. Uh, I'm not going to try to be an expert on it um, because my take on things may be different. And the reason being is that, and, and this is something people need to really think about, Everybody's got different fingerprints. That means that you're an individual. That means that God deals with you on an individual basis. My needs or my understandings, my what I'm going to have to have uh, or experience, ain't going to be the same as somebody else's. It's just that simple, and it's not complicated, common sense kind of application. Um, and God's got a lot of common sense, I think. Uh, he's also got a sense of humor. Uh, and if you don't believe that, when you first get out of bed, you go look in the mirror. You'll get a good laugh if you, if you had a fight with a pillow all night. I mean, you know, hair standing on end and all that, and squirrely looks because the light's too bright. I mean, uh, everybody should have one of those pictures just to remind them. So, yeah, uh, I feel that there's going to be some things happen. Um, my personal belief, though, so, don't go to... Uh, anything much more than the particular way I am. The uh, particular way I am right now is that I'm putting every bit of energy, all of my efforts, and long days into trying to set this country free, put things back the way they're supposed to be. And it's a regression. It's not, a, it's not something that goes forward. Um, the documentation that was filed is such that it was a notification process, but it was based on 1787 Constitution. People can look it up. Articles of Confederation. Uh, Bill of Rights. We resurrected a little thing called the Declaration of Independence, meaning that if a government is oppressive, you can you get the right you got the right duty and honor to replace it. So, you know, these people are in trouble. Uh, a copy of those documents has been gotten to the Pentagon, and they just loved it. I heard we got a gold star for uh, extra effort or something. Um, so, you know, you got people at the Pentagon, you got people uh, higher up, you got people lower, you got people all over. Um, when I made the addressment to the troops, and we found the very next day that it was already in Japan, going through the Navy and the uh, Marines and the Army there, that told me that people were hungry for the truth. Doesn't matter if they're military or civilian or what. It told me that I had done at least a, a reasonable job in presentation. Uh, everybody could understand it, and the directive was climb that uh, command chain, follow the chain of command, see whether or not the sergeant agrees. Well, of course I do. That's regs. Okay. Can I ask the lieutenant about that? Sure, go ahead. And off and on and down the road it goes. I understood it's been pretty pervasive, and I'm so happy that it was, that I could be a part of something like that. Then the other part. I was asked to address the general population everywhere, anybody could hear. It's no, it's not going to do anybody any good for somebody to get all 
excited and go running around the street naked or something. That is not cool. Uh, people probably don't need that much information. Uh, and they probably don't need to know some of these people that well. <laughs> but uh, if you think about it, I mean, uh, none of the ideas of uh, takeover works. The reason it doesn't is because you are overstepping the boundary of freedom of will of the other person. doesn't matter if they've already stepped on yours, but you're overstepping theirs. What you want to do is do so in a lawful form. That way they can't get they can't wiggle loose. That way in two days, three days when your demonstration occupy or whatever you're doing is gone, they can uh, sweep the street and everything's uh, back to normal. If you address the root of the problem, the illegality, or in this case unconstitutionality of things, you divorce yourself from a system that's uh, oppressive take care of the root of the problem instead of just picking a flower. And that's my answer to that one. Perfect. Um, now let's get into uh, something that's come up lately on Facebook and uh, Freedom Reigns. Uh, I kind of want you to go over uh, Nasara and the similarities but the obvious differences of what's about to happen with the economic system. Okay, well, um, there's two of them, first of all. Uh, one's bogus, and one's real. The bogus <laughs> one is the only one you're going to find anything out about, because the rest of it is sealed, locked up, erased, and uh, held uh, in confidence. And I mean the strictest confidence. Uh, I rather imagine Obama's birth certificate is probably in there with those documents. The thing about it is this. Nasara was real was, okay? And by that I mean the action and activity and legal proofs and agreements to it were real. That goes to those um, uh, repayments to the farmers that were on federal lands. Uh, Farm Aid was a part of that and a bunch of other things. Um, Problem is that it's all been locked up, put away. Now, whether it's been disassembled or not, I'm not sure. I'm trying to get a copy of the original uh, as we speak. I've got some people working on that. Um, I hope to be able to. Now, that thing basically uh, stated a prosperity agenda for the whole of the country, how things are going to be in difference. Uh, one thing is that the national debt's uh, bogus. Another thing is that so are mortgages. Uh, uh, the other part of it was that there were sufficient funding available in terms of real-time finance to pay all of the indebtedness of everybody. In short, you get a clean slate to work with. Uh, That's the good or real Nasera. Um, Restoration is the one that uh, Bush and a bunch of other people uh, put together. Reformation is the real Nasera. It's the R's, as somebody pointed out to me in an email. And Part of it is uh, uh, some changes in other words, but it doesn't really matter. The <clears throat> the New Deal, as such, the new idea of Nasera that's coming is going to be uh, extraordinarily different than even the Nasera was that we had before that was real. So, go ahead. Okay. Um there has been, well, let me just say, uh, I'm sure we're both aware, uh, that the Freedom uh, Reigns uh, Facebook page and Tree of Liberty Movement Facebook page uh, got uh, kind of attacked by trolls on uh, the same day, which I find oddly not coincidental. Um, and a lot of changes had to be made. Uh and uh, you had an incident where uh, Operation Greenlight was announced, and you had to put that uh, disinformation down. Uh, so to kind of talk uh, about what's the real deal right now, um, I, I, I want you to, uh, one, clarify the chain of information, where the good information is going to come from, and also talk about uh, on your on the Freedom Reigns uh, Facebook page, um, who J.B. Brown, uh, Grammy, and Kent Drake are, and how they relate to what's going on. 
Well, those are administrators of the uh, Facebook site uh, known as Freedom Reigns. Um, that's uh, who, the, who the list of people are. The um, uh, the other part of it is that the uh, changes had to be made in order to uh, keep false information from coming out uh, incorrectly. Now, due to the fact that somebody cannot put a permanent post on the Facebook page for Freedom Reigns, make sure that the trolls can't get in there and uh, take a dump in the middle of the parade. The happen. other part of this Fine. goes to yeah, people taking uh, small snippets of this, a little bit of that, putting it together, making it sound like something totally different, and then posting it as something that's for real. That deals with that green light incident. The uh, gist of it is this. At the point that green light is issued, um, there are about half a dozen people on this in this country who will be notified. The green light is for us to express that green light condition has uh, taken place as informed to us by the same individual, and it, we are to go as ballistic and public as possible with the information that we are a free country, and the military is taking out the bad guys, and we're getting ready to do the laundry. Now. There's going to be one place that you're going to see that in terms of the group, uh, the association, the, the, the individuals involved in Freedom Reigns, and that's going to be freedomreigns.us. You see it any place other than that as a base post. In other words, not a comment, or I think so, or looky at this, but a for real post. And those are heading posts where you can post within that post underneath, okay, then you will know that that condition exists. And everybody and their mother-in-law is supposed to go out and holler to the holler to the high hills, stand on the roof and scream freedom. Oops. Just had a hornet try to fly up my nose. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> That's one of the ones I, I don't know yet. <laughs> anyway, um, the only place you'll see uh, that notification from us will be on freedomreigns.us. There will be two postings. One will be in the chat room or Facebook page, as it's called. The other one will be on the official website. That's the only way that I know of that we can be assured that we're going to get the right uh, response. And that you know it's for real, that it ain't somebody playing games, such as was the case. Now, that person apologized. Well, I didn't mean it. Well, <laughs> you don't know what you're messing with. Keep your fingers out of it. So that's the reason for the changes. The troll okay. got in and messed it up. Yeah. Uh, I knew that. Just wanted to clarify for everybody else about why the changes. Mm -hmm. Um, I did get one question that I kind of want to clarify. Uh, Drake Kent, that is not you, correct? That is somebody that is helping you. Um, yeah, that's a cousin. Okay. Just wanted to uh, kind of get that out there for everybody. There's been some conversation about that. And... Uh, kind of uh, one of the last little areas I wanted to touch on is uh, I know you got in contact uh, with Carrie uh, on the show last night. Have you since been in contact with her? What plans do you have, uh, if any, with Project Camelot? I might talk to her later. I don't know. It depends on whether or not she wants to uh, talk to me. Um, yep. Some of the people that have been interviewed on uh, Camelot didn't seem to be uh, all that impressed. Um, one of the people that got on there supposedly knew what they were talking about, but uh, apparently don't have the uh, common sense to use a computer uh, and look up uh, the reality of the plan. Uh, the plan is hinted at back in the 50s. Um, well, excuse me, not the 50s. Um, there are records that go back to the Korean War, and... In those records, you'll find references to the idea that the military didn't like what was going on, dealing with a specific entity called the United Nations. 
it seems that the United Nations has had a tendency to broadcast uh, to the enemy their position, troop strength, what they were doing, and what the plan was. And so they left a radio man and a couple of guards with him uh, in a spot, and no, we're just uh, uh, we're just sitting here waiting, like you said. Uh, the commander took the rest of the tr troops and uh, outflanked the enemy and won a battle without, without very much bloodshed, as a matter of fact, um, and was what, quite successful. So uh, they did a little checking, and they found out uh, what was going on. Uh, there were uh, attempts to, for the military to bring charges against the United Nations at, the, at that point. Um, that didn't happen. It got subjugated, politics, whatever, money, however that worked. So the senior commanders, uh, flagship officers at that point, that's general and above, um, got together and for, started formulating the plan of, uh, first of all, rectifying the direction of the ship of state, and secondly, returning to freedom. Well, the direction of the ship of state uh, has been um, iffy at best, so the concentration was made into the freedom area. Uh, some of the people that uh, deal with the plan are the ones that deal with me, and this is primarily where I get my information. Um, I have people that uh, are principal in uh, worldwide operations, among others, that uh, I deal with off and on on a regular basis. and. This is where uh, a majority of uh, different types of information come from. It, uh, it also covers uh, things where if I don't know, and they don't either, they can check and find out. So um, it's not a thing where I'm totally in the dark. Now, I have had uh, information given to me in the, over the past, um, oh, I'd say week or so, uh, that's critical. Everybody wants proof. They want this. They want that. And I made an answer to, to an individual that uh, decided to ask that question for the umpteenth time. And here's how it is. Uh, if you don't have the security clearance to find out, you're not going to find out. Secondly, if you don't know how to use a computer, you might want to learn how and really start checking. Some of this information is already in record. The third part of this is... This uh, effort has lost 14 people dead, to include children. And I'm not going to give any kind of hints, directions, or uh, outings of any sort that will implicate anybody for any reason, simply on that basis alone. Um, that's not a challenge to uh, see whether or not a special operations unit or a sniper or bad guy could get to me. Uh, I'm sure they could. I don't have a doubt of that. Uh, however, um, I used to do those things, and to be honest, I'm pretty good, so it ought to be an interesting contest. Now, that's not a challenge. It's a statement of fact. I've already had uh, dealings with these people up close and personal. I, don't, I didn't like it, uh, but I didn't back up, and I didn't hesitate. And I won't. So, you know, um, what I'm looking at is that it doesn't have to be that way. People who are sent to do a certain thing, well, I tried and I couldn't do it. Whether they stand around behind a tree or not, I don't care. I'm not going to tell on them that they did. I'm not going to challenge to challenge them to see if they're any good either. Uh, my position is to get the freedom out, to help as many people get prepared as possible, spread the word as far as it'll, it'll go, and hopefully, just hopefully, make this what the plan calls for. Nice, peaceful transition. That's basically what I'm striving for, so hopefully that answers that. Yes, it does. Okay, we are getting close to the end here. Uh, I'm gonna, I wanted to take the mic and kind of uh, explain a misnomer that uh, has been perpetuated uh, as of late. Uh, about uh, a certain statement that Thomas Jefferson made about 300 years ago. And uh, it's a little letter that he wrote to William Smith about the Boston Tea Party. And uh -huh. there's a very famous line out of that letter uh, that uh, the 
government of the United States has used as a reason, I think, to continue to perpetuate war. But I'm going to read just a little bit more of that letter and see if everybody can uh, figure out uh, what Thomas Jefferson was talking about. And then uh, I'm going to have you kind of put a cap on the conversation and uh, give a nice conclusion uh, so that everybody has, you know, uh, a good uh, feeling in their belly when uh, they get off the radio today. So the quote from Thomas Jefferson in this letter, what country before ever existed a century and a half without a rebellion? And what country can preserve its liberties if their rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. The remedy is to set them right as to the facts. Pardon and pacify them. What signify a few lost lives in a century or two? The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. It is its natural manure. And I think it's safe to say that uh, Thomas Jefferson wasn't saying that we had to get a bunch of people killed every 20 years to have things be right. I think he was saying that uh, if we forget to uh, preserve our liberties as a nation, we might lose them. And it's uh, funny how strangely apropos that statement is today. So, uh, Drake, you want to wrap it up for us? Certainly. Uh, basically, it's fairly simple. Um, the idea of this plan takes that takes those things into account. It's an idea that, first of all, freedom can be had. It's not free as such. you got to put some effort into it, elbow grease. But it does not necessarily mean you got to bleed. But if you do, don't worry about it. The other part of it is that this may be fairly bloodless, which is the intent, purpose, direction that everybody wants to go. Think of being able to live free. Think of being able to have a job that not only means something, but pays well enough you can live on it. Uh, think of going back to the time when mom could stay home and actually raise the kids if she wanted to, and then even at the same time have a career. We got the internet. Uh, think about changing from the uh, manual labor that we have now to an age where you have devices that no longer pollute anything. They just pr produce energy or they just do their job. Think about not having a car that has wheels, let alone engine, or requires gas. You're looking at an extraordinary change in our basic way of life. Then add to it the idea that we might be able to be our brother's keeper without it costing us anything much other than the satisfaction, uh, and I'd pay that price any time, of the smile you get when you help somebody. And I think that pretty much sums it up. Well, I do want to take the time to thank you, Drake. Um, I know because of some extraordinary information that I get that uh, you have been absolutely amazing in this uh, transition that we're about to experience, and I know it hasn't been easy and you've had to shoulder a lot of weight. So I want to take the time personally to thank you for what must be an infinite number of people, even if they don't know it yet, uh, for your time and participation in this and for putting up with all of the negative blowback that comes with uh, <laughs> being a leader at this point in time uh, and shouldering the weight of the burden that Quite honestly, uh, your oath that you committed to a long time ago required. Uh, so thank you once again. Uh, thank you for everybody that's participated, uh, Dave Corso and uh, Wolf Spirit Radio, uh, Dietra and uh, Freedom Reigns U.S., and uh, I would want to especially thank uh, Eva Moore for uh, chiming in a couple of times and giving us the good information. 
Uh, I do want to let everybody know uh, that uh, I plan on doing a video documentary on the uh, new information that I've received and hopefully uh, prepare everybody for uh, maybe some uh, information that they weren't probably expecting to hear. Uh, but it's going to help with the transition and we're going to talk about uh, a lot of the disinformation that's put out there and give some uh, good uh, discernment to what's about to go down in the future. Uh, let me turn the mic over to Eva and let her say goodbye. It kind of, just to uh, capture the audience that we do have today, what Bill is proposing he's going to put forward is going to be um, kind of carrying on with what you spoke on, Drake, around the list of people that are, you know, being arrested and the list of people that aren't and why they're not. Um, Bill has come into some new information as of yesterday, and it's kind of breaking. So instead of um, going into a lot of detail right now, he would like to kind of sit down trolled interview style on Friday and um, tomorrow and put it out so everybody can have a, a watch, and it will be a YouTube video. Thank you, Excellent. And uh, I'd like to conclude everything by uh, thanking uh, Blog Talk Radio for sponsoring uh, this uh, radio show and uh, pass on the positive energy that uh, everybody's going to need very soon and remind everybody that uh, when the 24-hour notice goes down, you know, two, three days to sit and watch your television and stay hunkered down and uh, be happy and be safe is probably going to be necessary. So take advantage of the time that you'll be given and uh, take the opportunity to get some education about what's really going on in the world because it's going to come out uh, and it's going to come out so fast it's going to be trying to like uh, drink water from a fire hose. <laughs> so uh, hold on to your hats. And uh, Drake? Thank you very much. It was a wonderful interview, and uh, we'll be turning over the stream. So thank you, everyone. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Bill, for being here, and uh, you brought forth a lot of uh, questions that we've been receiving in emails constantly, and uh, I'm just I'm really thrilled that you you brought them out on the air in the manner that you did. They're very concise. And anybody who continues to ask a question, well, I'm going to tell you flat out, I'm going to ignore you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're we're answering hundreds of emails every day with the same repeat questions, guys. There's a Q&A on Wolf Spirit Radio. There will be a Q&A section on the Freedom Reigns website. So, um, you know, when you when you call in to ask questions of Drake, please. Take a look at the Q&A sheet before you ask your questions. It really saves a lot of time. Um, now, everything that Drake has been bringing forward is um, really exciting news. And, um, you know, he's talked several times on getting to know your community, working in your community, building in your community. And as I end with each show, guys, be the change that you want to see. If you are looking for a leader, look in the mirror because you are the leader. And with that, I want to thank everybody. And uh, we'll be back on Sunday on Wolf Spirit Radio. We will take some uh, questions from the audience on Sunday. So with that, thank you all, and good night. Hey. Good night.